be sure to watch this whole video to see my discovery of these items and what I ended up doing with them. What is up guys? Welcome back to another Urbex adventure with Freetography. Today guys, I'm in, well, as usual, another abandoned house. I'm just gonna make an assumption that this is a hoarder's house because all the stuff that's scattered about. First thing I see here is a lot of peeling paint in the kitchen. Let's get right to it. I don't know what we're gonna see. I'm not sure what we're gonna find, but this is definitely an abandoned time capsule hoarder house. So cue the music, cue the intro. See you guys on the other side. This video is sponsored in part by Loom Cube. Loom Cube lives to help us create better content. Hit the link in the video description below to shop Loom Cube's wide assortment of products and use the code FREAKPHOTO at checkout for 15% off your Loom Cube purchase. Okay guys, so a bit of a hoarding situation I believe. In here, the kitchen is probably two to three feet, maybe two feet high with newspapers and other debris. Uh, just to get up to the upstairs of the house. So we're going to hit that in a little while. Um, yeah. So a lot of stuff to look at here. Here we got a Winnie the Pooh book right there. Okay. We got a bunch of Puffs Kleenex here not even opened. What do we got this way? See a lot of movies laying around on VHS and DVD. Here we've got... Uh, James Earl Jones, Morgan Freeman, and Louis Gossett Jr. collection. We've got a Tom Cruise movie here. Sink is full. Oh, man. We got a bunch of tuna. Oh, no, that's salmon. We got a bunch of salmon in there. Okay. So there's cobwebs right there that we don't want to walk through. I'm stepping on so much stuff in here, guys. Guys, check this out. There's a... Uh, rolled there's a bunch of pennies penny jars one there one right there another one right there in the peanut butter jar it's all pennies okay stove there's a bathroom back here see a lot of these cobwebs here guys i bet you i'm gonna walk through these at one point not going in there it's a mess it's just a lot of stuff on the floor there's a shirt hanging up there though Okay, I've heard the upstairs is an awesome, awesome part of the house. We're gonna hit the upstairs after. We'll cover this main floor first. So many movies. Oh, Jesus, I'm stepping all over stuff here. Okay. Anger management, red skeleton. What the hell is I just stepping on down there? A few TVs here. The calendar says July 2002. All right, so that would be likely the date, the year that this house was left abandoned and vacated. It was 2002. Cookbooks here, wallpaper falling down. Rotary phone, Let's see if it works. Nope, doesn't work, guys. Okay, we are moving into this room. Guys, how do people live like this? Man, there's a cabinet over there with a bunch of stuff in it, but I'd have to climb through all this to get over there. I'd also have to climb through all this to get over everything. Um, let's see, guys. I'm gonna step up on here. It's a bunch of, it's mostly magazines and stuff. This furry raccoon poo right there. whole bunch of books over here chairs over there there's a furnace down there look at all these tapes they don't even look like they're used oh yeah this is where all this cobwebs are that I gotta go around let's try not to put our heads in the cobwebs oh. All right, this room has a bit more breathing room in it. This is hilarious. Okay, guys, watch this. The whole room is in absolute shambles and disarray, right? Are you seeing this? Now watch. Watch this cabinet. 
It's perfect. All the teacups are perfectly placed inside this cabinet when everything else in this room is an absolute disaster. More pictures there. Old picture there. says Royal Canadian Air Force. There's a bed over there. It's a furnace right in the middle of the room here. That calendar says 2000, actually December 1999 to 2000. over here. Oh, man. Some books over there and stuff. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta squeeze my ass through here, guys. Oh, my God. Stairs are just cluttered with stuff to get upstairs. Power. Oh my god, guys, the lights work <laughs> in this house. Holy shit. There's an old blender over there. All right, guys, let's see where we're stepping here. I wonder if this door will open into the living room. Okay, let's see, there's a fish tank here. Seems to be some records over there. And then this cabinet here is also full of stuff, nicely, neatly organized. Maybe we'll come back and check this stuff out after we go up this death trap of stairs here, guys. Start here, guys. Oh. A hole in the roof, causing a lot of problems. Okay. I'm exhausted already. I'd like to know what's in there. Probably nothing. Always nothing in these things. Oh, I think it's backwards anyway, so I can't open it. Get 
Okay, guys, so we got some yarn in here, different colors, and some linens. We got Grandma's purse, and underneath we have some more Christmas things, and some more linens. And that's about it for inside here. This is completely coming apart. The mice have had a lot of fun in here. Sorry if I'm huffing and puffing a lot, guys, but it's really hard to get through here. Oh, we have one, two, three, four, five rooms to get through. There's a man's shaver. The man's name is Harvey. This. this is a bathroom. This is a big bathroom. Holy cow. Oh, and that goes up into the attic. Another fish tank. There's some old stuff in here. Oh, and there's the stairs I saw that were covered with newspapers. So we're staying here where we are. This. Why do people keep so many magazines? Oh. more furry raccoon poo down there. What's this? It's heavy. What's this thing? Is this a reel-to-reel -reel tape player? Yeah, look at that. More clothes. Look at this old radio. Northern Midge Electric. I'd like to hear that play. Oh, if anybody sees anything or recognizes anything interesting, note it in the comments and what time you found it. Because I'm just overwhelmed by all of these things that I'm finding in here. That I'm probably not focusing on something that you want me to focus on. There's just too much going on in here. Okay guys, so there's a lot of stuff to see in this room. I found these things here. Some of you ladies might remember these. Some of you men might remember these. Sewing kits. Found a number of those things. And then I here I found a man's shoe shine kit. Hollywood Santa White for all white shoes. Cinderella dry cleaner for shoes. Shoe Prim Deluxe liquid neutral liquid cream black enamel white shoe cleaner there's so much stuff guys scattered in these random boxes and cases i mean i can't go through them all and you missed it but a raccoon was in here and he went running for it as soon as i was as soon as the coast was clear a raccoon was hiding down there somewhere and he came out running. I don't know where he is now. He's not in here anymore. A couple more rooms. Here's a knife. Right here. It's a heavy one. Raccoon poop again. I had to step on it. Oh my god, there's another room over there. This room here. Okay. So many books. Oh. Shoes. More books. Light.
This is like a lot of travel books right here. What's this thing? What's he keeping in here? Hmm, not much. Henry V, Henry VI, Shakespeare. Okay. So this is a pretty interesting desk here. Looks like this is a screwdriver. Yeah, old uh, screwdriver set, interchangeable. It's got a lot of pairs of glasses back there. Astronomy, religion. These are very, very well-read people, guys. Some pajamas in there, not even open. This is an ironing board right here. The life and death of Adolf Hitler. History of the SS. Beyond, Eagle and Swastika. German dictatorship, the conspiracy against Hitler, inside Hitler's headquarters, rise and fall of the Third Reich. Wow. He's got Japanese, German, Jewish. These people were, uh, these people knew their stuff. Guys, watch this. National Geographic Magazine, 1944, 1936, I can't read the first one, but look at this. We have every issue of National Geographic all the way up to... Oh, 72, we go this way. Nineteen eighty-two. Plus the index from nineteen forty-seven to nineteen seventy-six. And then there's an index from nineteen forty-seven to nineteen eighty-three. So I'm gonna guess that there's more here somewhere. Canadian Volunteer Service Medal. The War Medal, 1939. Guys, this is nothing to be messed with at all. Wow. And then there's even more, guys. Somebody has got to claim this stuff. Guys, then there's more in this one. Guys, this is heavy.
Okay, guys, this place is getting heavy after what I just found. I found somebody's war medals and souvenirs from World War II Germany. I'm uh, the little blown. My mind's a bit blown right now, guys, with the stuff that I just found. I can't imagine it getting much better than that in here. Okay, so we got one more room to go, guys, and then we're done. But that room definitely takes the cake, though. Holy crap. Oh, this room's a mess. Giant hole in the roof over there. And this looks like it's pretty much just books. Like an office or something. But oh, this whole room is going to collapse and go outside. Yeah. I'm not stepping another foot into this room. Because I don't want to end up outside. This is 1996. Okay, guys. This has been a very heavy house to explore. Not only has it been physically exhausting, but mentally exhausting. I'll tell you one thing, guys. There's a couple of things that I've never really wanted to find in an abandoned house. One, a dead body. Two, somebody's war medals. You know, there's a part of me that says I should take them, find out who owns this place, and hand them over because they might not know they're here. But, guys, at the end of the day, none of this stuff is my responsibility. Maybe you feel differently to take these medals and either give them to a museum or something, I don't know guys, it just doesn't feel right to me to take them out of here. So guys, what happened was I was here about two, three weeks ago and I first explored this house and I was upstairs in this room, which looks kind of like a library. And as I'm exploring this house, I'm starting to see some interesting stuff in that I'm seeing a lot of uh, war stuff. And I've got some books here on Hitler and the Third Reich and the SS in Germany, Korea. Uh, there are a lot of books on war and uh, a lot of really old stuff. Now, right there on that bookshelf, you see all those National Geographics. Right there on the top of that shelf, I found two boxes, a red box and a blue box. Guys, I opened those boxes and what I found were two sets of medals from World War II. I, mean, I didn't know what to do, guys. I was completely shocked. I ended up moving the box to a different location, and I was going to grab some information on the family, see if I can find next of kin or surviving family members, and return those medals. Well, guys, that was not sitting right with me. I'd gone home, and I'd been home for about a week, and uh, I'd seen a couple of people already exploring this house, and I was worried that too many people were going to get a hold of this place. It was going to get into the wrong hands and the medals were going to disappear. So I came here two days ago to get more names and more information and to grab the medals from where I put them. Guys, they were gone. They were gone. The only thing left behind was this empty box, which contained one of the medals. And there was a bunch of tissue on the floor and some pictures that were in the box. It looked to me, guys like somebody had rifled through and took off with the box. So guys, fast forward to that afternoon, I had sent a message to a guy named Noah Nowhere. His link is right there. He came to this house and explored this house and put up a video and some pictures. I'll put a link down below to that video. And I had thought, okay, maybe Noah, maybe, maybe Noah took, he might've had the same idea as me, uh, I don't know. I made the mistake of making an assumption, but I simply said to Noah, did you come to this house and take the medals? Please be honest with me. He said no. Noah showed me a comment on one of his pictures of someone who had been here just a few days before him. And he had commented on seeing some pretty interesting stuff and a lot of Nazi stuff. So Noah sent me a link to this guy's profile and so I could see the photos that he had posted. So I sent a message to this guy named Rob who had come to this house and explored it a few days before Noah to find out if, in fact, he had seen the medals and if he had taken them. So in speaking with Rob, he told me that he did see the medals, he did see the Nazi memorabilia and war souvenirs, but that they didn't take them. Uh, he did say, he did mention that he told some friends about this house and that he now is worried that maybe somebody 
got to this house and took the medals. I put a post on my Facebook page, angry, wanting to get these medals back. If the person who walked away with these medals did so with the same intentions as me, good. If the person who walked away with these medals just wanted a souvenir, not good. I got a great response from that. A um, lot of support, a lot of hate too. Story goes, Rob's mom came back to the house the next day to retrieve the medals. They were not happy with the thought of these war medals sitting in this house. So they came back to the house to retrieve the medals and took them home. They talked amongst themselves. They were gonna do some research themselves. They had seen that I had already started the process of finding family and contacting family and friends to return the medals to them. So this family from Trenton, Ontario decided to give me the medals back and let me continue on with my quest of finding family. A very, very kind gesture. They didn't have to do that. I would have been totally fine, guys if they had kept the medals themselves and continued on their quest to return them, but they gave them to me to allow me to do it. So to Rob and your mom and your sister and your family, thank you so much. So guys, here I am in the house. This is my third visit to the house. I am now grabbing more names, more information. I am in possession of the medals. I'm gonna go through the house and find more information, take it home and see what I can find. Hello. This is a really strange message to be sending, so please bear with me. I have a hobby in which I explore and photograph abandoned houses. Most homes are empty and just interesting enough to photograph, but on the rare occasion, sometimes I come across items that a family may not know were there or should at the very least be placed somewhere safe. It turns out that one of the homes I recently explored was one that is in your family, the home of your aunt and uncle from what I have gathered. I would rather explain all this to you over the phone, if you can call me. I do apologize if this feels like an invasion of their privacy. I'm also sensitive to the fact that this may stir up things that don't need stirring, but I just want to do the right thing. There were some valuable and important items in that house that should be held on to by family. There was two sets of medals from World War II. I have also reached out to several others in your family, and I will work down the line until I'm hopefully able to make contact with someone. I was able to work out who the surviving family members are from a piece of mail I found in the home that had your mother's name on it as well as your aunt. I found your mother's obituary online, and that was my key to finding out who I can contact in the family to get these medals into the right hands. I will also add that your aunt's house has been left open and rifled through, and these war medals really should be in someone's possession, and I just want to give them to you. I have removed them so that they won't be stolen. They were in two boxes in a bedroom upstairs. I hope to hear back from you, as I genuinely do want to do the right thing. Can you please give me a call, and I can fill you in. This message was sent to seven members of the surviving family on the wife's side. Of those seven people, two of them blocked me immediately after reading the message. Four of them ignored the message entirely, and the one person who I was able to find a phone number for hung up on me, ignored two further phone calls, and a voice message. It was safe to say at this point that this family is not at all interested in saving and preserving these boxes, war medals, and other important items. Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, so today, guys, I'm heading up, uh, heading east from where I live. I got about another two hour drive ahead of me. And what we're doing today, guys, is we are handing off the medals uh, and other items to a friend of mine, his name, his name is Matt Vanderbilt, and he's a World War II collector. He's got a entire basement full of uh, shelves and display cases full of World War II relics and memorabilia, and uh, I'll let him tell the story in a little while. I'm okay. gonna let Matt put together a bit of a video for me to explain what he does and who he is and why he does it. And we'll show you what he's done with these medals. So Absolutely. guys, what I've decided to do is put these medals in Matt's care on what I'm calling a permanent loan. They're with him for as long as they can be. If for whatever reason this family smartens up and decides to contact me, then I will get the medals back from Matt and we give them back to the fans this week. So when we get there, I'll introduce you guys to Matt and then we'll let him tell you what he's all about and what he's doing, why he does what he does, and then we'll wrap this one up. 
Thanks, guys. See you guys when we get there. Okay, guys, three hours later, and I'm finally here. This is my friend Matt here. How's it going, guys? He is the guy who's going to help us out. Here's the goods, guys. Here's all the collection. We got two boxes. There's two Look in there. That. Yeah, and we got Little all kinds of stuff. Pins and souvenirs, coins. So much cool stuff. German pins. Yeah. Just his whole little life in a box, pretty uh -huh. much. So I believe, guys, like I said, this is two different guys. We've got this a, one's cool. I opened this up a second ago. Yeah, it's got the windmills Dutch in there. Dutch windmills. He sent it to his mom. As a fellow Dutchman, I can appreciate <laughs> this. <laughs> that is cool. Just incredible. So, guys, what Matt's going to do is he's going to go home and he's going to add this to his collection and he's going to make us a video of his collection, why he does what he does and how he's got it all set up. So he's going to send that to me. So thanks a lot to Matt. Thank you, sir. Stay tuned in a couple minutes, guys. I'll show you guys what Matt has to say, and then we're going to come back and wrap this one up. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Vanderveld, and as you can see behind me, I'm single and have no kids. <laughs> nah, in reality, I'm just a history buff, history nerd, whatever you want to call me. But just like Dave, I'm also a fellow explorer and photographer. In 2016, I published a book through Jean Goulet Publishing in Paris, France, featuring my photography inside North America's abandoned insane asylums. I also wrote 15,000 words of history communicating the history and rise and fall of the asylum era. To me, it's important that we remember these dark times because as cliche as it sounds, we must not repeat them. But today, I'm not here to talk about asylums. I'm here to share some insight into why Davis so graciously chosen me to become caretaker of the Harvey Brothers item. I've collected World War II since I was just a kid. My father is an auctioneer and antique store owner. So while exploring countless flea markets and antique stores, I quickly learned everything has a value and there's a collector for everything. A heritage, I'm half Netherlander, half British. My Dutch family survived German occupation and my British family survived the Blitz in Liverpool. My great uncle Arthur fought with the 2nd British Infantry Division in Burma and my great grandfather fought in the tank corps of both world wars. In my life, I've accumulated quite a collection and I'm extremely happy to give homes to Harold and Henry right next door to my great uncle Arthur here on the top shelf. I've applied for full military records through Library and Archives of Canada, and in about a month's time, we'll know a better understanding of their wartime experiences in Europe. Now, before I show you the darker side of my collection, I need to provide a disclaimer and make it explicitly clear that I am not a Nazi. The draw to such items is simply an investment, both financially and historically. After the war, many of these items were destroyed or repurposed, so these are rare pieces of history which help us never forget. I am not political. I do not support any hatred of any kind, and I've attempted to cover as many swastikas as I can to avoid you being offended. If you will be offended, please turn off the video now, but make sure you su subscribe to Dave beforehand. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. So in the last three years or so, I've traveled to Europe a handful of times. I've done probably, I'd say, 15,000 kilometers throughout Western Europe. Metal detected battlefields. So here's some of my finds. This mess tin here, this German mess tin, was found right in front of a German bunker, lying right on the ground almost. This is chaff. This aluminum foil is thrown out of, out of planes to scramble enemy radar. And this was found during the Battle of Arnhem, during Market Garden. These are 50 cal casings, 20 millimeter casings. This is a piece of shrapnel found at Vimy Ridge. I found that just on the ground. German buttons, German badges. This is a battle damaged SS belt buckle. Has seen better days. Big brick in the back here is actually a brick from Hitler's home, the Berghof. I've got a couple cool items down here I'll show you. These are a couple periscopes out of tanks. This one is out of a Sherman tank. And this right here, this heavy little piece of kit, it says, Outfit for Stamping Metal is from World War I, and it's a dog tag stamper. It comes with a little anvil for marking spoons, forks, knives, and then on the other side, dog tags and meat cans. Shows you how you do the dog tag there. It comes with a little mallet. It's just a really cool piece of World War I. This poster right here is dated May 10th, 1940. That's the day the Germans invaded Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. Basically establishes the new German rule of law. Of all the items to collect from World War II, German helmets are my favorite to collect and study. Every one of them is just so unique. They all tell a story. This is a German Air Force helmet, M42 Army. This is a battlefield relic in incredible condition. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
Here is another relic. And this one is known as a KIA helmet. And I'm sure you can guess why. Ouch. Here's the inside. Pretty nasty. This right here on the left is a propaganda leaflet from the Germans to the Russians. These were shot out of uh, artillery rounds. They were all rolled up into tight packages, launched through the barrel, and sent to the enemy. And this basically just outlines what's going to happen if you surrender. There are eight rules there on what's expected of a Russian POW. Pretty cool piece. This right here is a Hitler Youth Knife. These right here are German death cards. So every time a soldier was killed at the funeral, they would hand out these cards with a little biography explaining what happened to him and his life, etc., etc. This is a German MG42 belt found at Stalingrad. These are two M2 M24 stick grenades. This item right here is what's known as a Panzerfaust or tank fist. You can guess what they were used for. This one is completely safe and legal. No explosives whatsoever. The markings and paint are unfortunately post-war, but it's the real deal. Pretty cool. Right here are German stripper boots from 1939 to 45, maybe earlier. <laughs> so right here is a German S-mine bouncing Betty. What would happen is this would be buried right to about here. You come along and you unknowingly stand on that. Push this down, which sets off a pretty nasty chain of events, launching this cup here up to about waist level and cutting you in half. Not fun. When making my decision on what to do with these boxes, medals, and war relics, I felt that I only had two options. One, return them to the house, hide them in a safe place, and not worry about them. Or, number two, call my friend Matt and offer them to him on a permanent loan to his vast World War II collection. Having seen Matt's collection in photos and coming to see his passion to war and history, there was no other option in my mind. The Harvey Brothers War Medals and Memories no longer sit hidden in a run-down abandoned home. They are now proudly on display in Matt's home. Should the family ever contact me to want these medals back, Matt and I have agreed to return them. But until that day, this is the new home of the lost and forgotten Harvey Brothers War Medals.